Welcome back. So it's that time of year again when it's getting cold outside and the season's holidays are just around the corner and JavaScript developers all around the world are being asked to spice up their company's websites, blogs, apps and e-commerce stores with a bit of festive fun. So nothing says festive fun more than some snowflakes falling from the top of your site generated by JavaScript, which is actually a pretty retro effect when you think about it. And needless to say, it's a terrible idea because it's providing no value to your users and it's just getting in the way of them interacting with your site. But if you do have a marketing department which are insistent on making your website festive, then I'm going to show you how you can create a really simple snowflake effect with a few JavaScript functions quickly and easily. And it's actually quite a bit of fun as well. So let's head on over to Visual Studio Code and I'll show you how you can create a simple and effective snowflake effect. So all we need for our project is a simple index page to test out our snow effect. And the only thing I'm going to do uh, outside of the JavaScript is just to set the body color to be black uh, because our snowflakes are going to be a kind of white color and you're not going to be able to see that against a white background. Uh, let's just also remove any margin from that too. And as I said, we don't need any markup for this at all. We're just going to drop a script tag into the body and write all of our JavaScript inside of here. And there's basically going to be seven steps that we're following here. We're going to create some constants uh, that will be used to control the snowflake effect. And we're going to create a canvas which will be dropped onto the body of the document as well. And then the next thing is to actually start writing some functions. And we'll write functions to create snowflakes, draw a snowflake on the page, update a snowflake, and then animate all the snowflakes. And then finally, we're just going to wrap everything up by putting in some event listeners uh, for when the page uh, resizes. So let's start with the constants, as mentioned. So the first thing we're going to want is the number of snowflakes that we're going to need. And this is going to depend on how intense you want the effect. But I'm going to start off with 300, which should give us quite a snow flurry on the page. And then the other thing we want is a max snowflake size as well. And this will be the radius of each of the snowflakes. I'm just going to set that as five. So it'll be like a maximum of five pixels. And then the other thing we want is the snowflake speed as well. So how fast are these snowflakes going to go? Uh, and they will actually vary for each one, which gives us quite a nice sort of parallax effect uh, by default. But uh, we want to have them all moving at different speeds. So I'm going to set that up to a maximum of two, for our example. And then the other thing I want to create is a default color for them as well. And the color I'm going to choose, so it's just a hex color. I'm just going to set it as 3Ds, which is kind of like just an off white. Uh, because if we do use a pure white color, then when we drop it onto pages that where it's a completely white page, um, obviously you won't see them and, unless they're flying over things. And then the other thing we need here, it's not necessarily a constant, but a variable that we want to uh, keep track of is an array of snowflakes. So we'll be generating snowflake objects, putting them into this array, and then using that array to actually track them and move them across the page. So that's our constants done. The next thing we want to do is actually create the canvas, which we're going to drop on to the document body. So let's create our canvas element. I'm going to store it into a variable called canvas. And you could put this into your markup if you wanted to, uh, but Obviously, we're just going to be dropping this script onto different pages, uh, so it eliminates the need for any markup on the page. And once we've got our canvas, what we'll do is set a couple of properties on it, and we're going to adjust its style. So we'll say the position of this is going to be absolute, and then also the style of uh, its top position, we'll set it to be zero pixels. So it'll always start at the top of the page, or at least the canvas will be at the top. And then the other thing that we want to do, which is quite important actually, is to set the pointer events, uh, which is a CSS property of none, which basically makes it completely transparent and you can actually click things underneath it because otherwise this canvas is going to sit on top of the whole web page and you won't be able to click anything, which isn't obviously good. Then the other thing we want to do is set the width of the canvas equal to the window dot inner width, which essentially means that it'll spread across the whole of the page. And then the same thing again for the height. So window, oops, window dot inner height. So now our canvas is stretching across the whole of the page. And once we've done that, we can just append it to the 
document body. Or it could go somewhere else if you wanted the snowflake effect to uh, occur just in one section of your page. One final thing that we're going to set up as a global variable here is the context for the canvas, uh, which basically allows us to draw on it. So we're going to get the context of our canvas element and we want the 2D context. Okay, so we're all set up now with all of our global variables and as mentioned, we're going to create some functions to do all of the jobs. And the first thing that we need to really do is have a function that creates a snowflake. So we'll say const create snowflake. And it's just a simple arrow function here. And what we're going to do is we're actually just going to return a snowflake object from this. So rather than just using curly braces here, I wrap these in parentheses, we'll just actually return an object uh, straight away from this function. And we're going to have the X position of the snowflake, the Y position of the snowflake. We also want the radius of the snowflake. What is its color going to be? And uh, we also want the speed that it's going to be moving at. So how are we gonna calculate all of these different properties? Well, we're just going to first of all create a random position for the snowflake. So we'll say math.random and whatever the canvas uh, width currently is. So something in between the minimum and the maximum of that. And then the Y position, we're going to put that somewhere on the page uh, for the canvas, uh, somewhere between the minimum and the maximum, the canvas height. So we've already got the maximum radius size that we defined in our constants before, but we want to actually uh, get different sizes of snowflakes. So we're going to create random sizes here. So math.random times max snowflake size, and that will obviously give us a number between one, uh, zero and the snowflake size. So I want to make sure we're adding one onto that so we don't get a, a zero uh, sized radius for that. And then the color, we're just passing in that constant of snowflake color. And then the other thing is the speed, which is again is going to be a math.random call. And then we're just going to say max snowflake speed. We'll put a minimum value of three there, just so we don't get any really, really slow falling snowflakes. That should be lowercase math. So that is our function to create a snowflake. What we also want to do is draw it on the canvas as well. So let's create another function here to do just that. So we'll say const draw snowflake. And this is gonna be another arrow function. And we're actually going to pass in one of these snowflake objects uh, so that we've got all of the information that we need to draw it onto the canvas. So what we'll do is from our context that we provided, uh, that we grabbed earlier on, we're going to begin a new path. And the context.arc, uh, which will draw us a nice little circle, at position, snowflake x, and then snowflake y. So don't forget this is the object that we're creating in this function just above there. And then snowflake radius gives us the size of the uh, circle to draw. And then we just pass in zero and math.py for the final elements, final arguments. And then the context.fill style. Now, uh, what color do we want? And we'll say snowflake.color. Should we get the right spelling? And then after that, just to finish it off, we say context.fill. And once we've filled it, uh, we just close off the path. So we'll say context.close path. And that function should now take a snowflake object and draw it somewhere onto the canvas, uh, depending on uh, where the X and Y positions have been set. So we could probably just try that out quickly. Uh, if we just say uh, in here, we're going to uh, draw a snowflake, just pass in create snowflake to that. That should create a random one for us. And you may be able to see just there right in the corner that we've got a uh, a uh, very small dot. And if we keep refreshing the page, you should see that it kind of is appearing in different places each time. Uh, it looks like we've only got half circle there. So um, yeah, okay, so math.py needs to be multiplied by two. And now we get a full little circle there. Okay, so those functions are working okay. Let's actually work on uh, the other bits and pieces that we need. And the other thing that we need is the ability to actually change one of the snowflake values. Uh, so it, when it actually is, needs to be updated and moved on the page. So let's create a function called update snowflake. And again, that'll take in a snowflake argument. So one of those objects that we're going to be creating. So all we really need to do is update the Y position of this snowflake. So we'll say snowflake dot y uh, plus equals because it'll be going down the page i'll say snowflake dot speed 
and then if it gets to the bottom of the page we don't want it to keep going because it will just keep going infinitely and we want to regenerate these snowflakes as they kind of get to the bottom of the page so one thing we can do here is when the snowflake uh, dot y is bigger than the canvas height uh, then we'll reset it now we're going to reset it by actually reassigning it a new snowflake object and the reason we're doing object.assign here is because if we were just to reassign the variable value uh, or the, the item in that position in the array, should I say, um, then the reference will be lost and it won't actually uh, generate a new snowflake for us. So object.assign snowflake and create a new snowflake. So that function is pretty simple and just handles the updating of the snowflake. Uh, the next thing and probably the final thing that we really need to do is to animate the whole uh, process. So kind of take these functions and use them to make an animation for us. So we'll create a function called animate. And the first thing we'll do in this animate function is just clear the canvas, get rid of everything on there. So context.clear uh, rect uh, gets rid of everything. And then we'll say canvas uh, dot width and start height, just to make sure we're getting everything removed from the canvas. No, nope. right. And to animate all of the snowflakes, we're going to loop through everything that we've got in our snowflakes array, uh, which we haven't populated yet, but we'll do that in just a second. So snowflakes for each. Uh, and if for each snowflake, what we're going to do is just call those two functions, basically. So first of all, update the snowflake. It's uh, in the array and then draw it this page because uh, we've got an empty canvas now to uh, to draw that on. So this animate function won't do anything at the moment because we're not populating the array yet. So let's just do that so that we've got some snowflakes in the array when the page loads. So I'm just going to use a simple for loop here. So let i equals zero. i is less than the number of snowflakes which we defined at the top of the page in our constants. But each time we go through the loop, uh, we'll access the snowflakes array and just basically push on the result of a create snowflake function call. That's kind of just initializing the snowflake array for us. So we should see something on the page now if we just call the animate function uh, just one time here. If we save that, you can see we've got all of our various different snowflakes appearing and refreshing the page, puts them in different places each time. So how do we call the animate function repeatedly in an efficient way? Well, you may be able to get away with set interval and basically call the animate function every so many times. Uh, so for example, if you called it every 200 milliseconds, uh, you should find that the snowflakes uh, do actually move. It's a bit slow, so we could speed that up. Uh, maybe go down to 20 milliseconds. And depending on the laptop that you're using, you might actually get a decent effect from this, uh, but it is quite processor intensive and the frame rate that you might get actually might be quite poor. So uh, that's actually not the best way to do it, but we can do uh, use a simple function uh, to uh, do this more efficiently, which you may or may not be familiar with. And that is the request animation frame function, which will basically give us a much better frame rate uh, calling this animate function again. So all we do inside of the animate function, we pass into the request animation frame function, the same function, the same animate function, and then this will get called repeatedly, uh, but it will be done in a much more efficient manner. So when you hit save, you can see it gives us a much smoother effect and it's looking really nice. Uh, but one thing that we could do rather than having the static X position for each of those snowflakes is to actually uh, add a little bit of a sway or a movement to the X position of those uh, snowflakes so that they actually kind of move left and right as well. You might want to leave it like this, um, but there, there is an option to, to actually make this change as well. So what we're going to do up here in the create snowflake uh, function, we're going to add another property to the object and we're just going to call it sway. And that will basically be the result of another math.random call. And we're just going to sway it from left to right, either negative or positive uh, for a value of up to one. So math.random will give us a value between zero and one to start off with. But if we subtract 0 0.5, we'll get a, a, a random value that's either negative or positive in that uh, particular range. So with that sway property now, uh, when we're actually updating the snowflake, we can do something else here too. 
can say snowflake.x plus is equal to snowflake.sway. And if we save that, you should be able to see now that the uh, uh, snowflakes have got a bit of a movement on the x-axis as well, and some of them are moving quite fast left and right, and some are moving quite slowly, um, and that's looking pretty good. So there's one little issue that we just need to sort out before we are able to drop this onto a page somewhere. And that is just what happens when the window resizes. So if we go back to the page and just try and open this up a bit, and you can see we're getting loads of blank space on the right hand side. And it doesn't actually change because we've not got anything in to listen for those uh, window resize events. Uh, so the canvas is set at that one size. So let's add in a couple of event listeners to handle that. And we'll just do that down here before we actually get to the animate function here before we set everything off. So the first one we're going to add in is an event listener for resize. Resize. And what we're just going to do is update the canvas width equal to the window dot inner width. So same thing that we did when we actually created the canvas. We were just updating the size of it uh, when the window is actually resized. Uh, in a height. And now what we should find is you might there might be a little bit of a lag while some of the existing snowflakes are kind of moved over, uh, but you can see it's now filling the whole page and no matter what size the browser window is, all of our snowflakes are in there. And the other thing that we want to do as well, you can't really see it on this example because there's nothing to scroll, uh, but when you do scroll down the page, uh, the canvas is pinned to the top uh, at zero pixels of the body. So this will only appear in the sort of first section of the page. So the other thing we need to do is just move that down when the window is scrolled as well. So we'll say window dot add event listener scroll and what we'll do as we did again when we initialize the canvas and set that up we'll say canvas.style.top is equal to window.scroll y how far have we scrolled down on the page uh, and then just pop in pixel values there uh, and as I say you can't see that at the moment but I'll show you that in a second when we drop that onto a page but that is our snow effect done. Let me copy all of the code uh, and then just show you how, what it looks like on some websites. Because we've just got it on a black page at the moment, which obviously it stands out quite well. So let me go on over to Amazon here. See what they're offering us today. And if I just pop all of that copied code into the console and hit enter, you can see our snow is appearing uh, on the page there. And if you scroll down, the snow effect should follow us down too. And you hopefully you can see it because I did use that gray color, but obviously there's a lot of white on this page. It's quite difficult to see, um, but hopefully you can also see that you can click on things as well. Uh, so that pointer events is enabling us uh, to click through the snow. It looks like the head is on top of that as well, so it's quite nice. Uh, what does it look like on Twitter or X? Again, let's open up the console. Actually, let's go to my profile here because that's not a very interesting page, is it, if I'm not logged in? We'll run that. Yay, and now we've got some snow. And now you've got a snow effect which you can use on any website, e-commerce store that you like. So that's the end of this tutorial and hopefully you found it a bit of fun just to uh, work out how to actually put some snowflakes on the page. And if you do get asked by your company to do something similar, then uh, you've got all the necessary code that you need to do to uh, make your website festive. Uh, but that's it for this tutorial and indeed for the rest of the year. So thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the new year.